Um, if you guys know anything about basketball, then you'll know that the Orlando Magic are a basketball team, so I'm going to tell you a quick little story about them. And then we're going to actually show you how to do this stuff in Excel. So we'll talk about how to get started with this, how to download that add-in, and then how to actually start using the add-in right inside of Excel. And we're even going to have Rachel drive some of our demos today. Oh, no. Get ready, everyone. So this will see what kind of a train wreck this turns into. All right, so what is data mining, and how do we make sense of everything? So in 2002, digital data finally took over analog data. So just to give you guys a little bit of a history here of maybe why we might even want to use data mining. So uh, digital, digital data finally took over analog back in, in 2002. In the year 2007, broadcast data alone, so it would be like your, your television broadcast kind of data, that was 1.9 zettabytes of data. That would be like every person in the world reading 174 newspapers per day. That's how much data that would end up being that we sent over the broadcast networks. It's quite a bit of data. They actually did a study and tracked the uh, worldwide computing capacity from 1987 to 2007. I'm sure they're still tracking this, but this was the, the, the one that I, I was able to find for this, uh, the, the most recent data anyway. And over that time period, the computing, computing capacity for the entire world, not just the US, the entire world, actually grew every year by about 58 percent on average. If you look at the GDP in the US, that's actually 10 times faster than the GDP grew in the US over that time period. So <clears throat> in 2011, there is actually an estimated 2.9 or 295 exabytes of data in the world. To give you guys an idea of how big that is, one exabyte is a one with 20 zeros behind it. So if your, your hard drive is uh, basically a very small portion of that, it's, it's not even just a, a one with a zero behind it in the grand scheme of things compared to, to what an exabyte is. Um, in 2013, there's an estimated 1,200 exabytes of data. So just in a two-year time period, we went from a couple hundred to a little over 1,200. <clears throat> Again, to put that in perspective for you guys, if we were to stack up CD-ROMs, because I know everybody still uses CD-ROMs because it's 1997, if we were using CD-ROMs and we put all that data on CD-ROMs and stack that all the way to the moon, it would go to the moon five times. So that's a, that's a, a long way to, to stack CDs. And then there's also a, the, the big library over in Alexandria, Egypt. They were, <clears throat> uh, when that library was, was founded, their goal was to keep a copy of every book in the world. And if we were to actually do that and keep every, you know, take the, the size of the Alexandria library and look at our 1,200 exabytes of data, that would be about 320 times the amount of data that's inside that library for every person on the planet, for all over, over 6 billion people that we have on the planet today. So the long and the short of this, the reason why I mention all this and, and put all these numbers out there for you is to say we have a lot of data and we really need to find a way to make sense of all that data. And that's really where data mining comes in. It's going to help us analyze all that data and get business questions. <clears throat> so there's going to come a time in every organization at some point where just looking at reports is not going to be enough. So we're not always going to be able to, to go get a detail report and look at all of our sales and draw conclusions from it. We're not always going to be able to just go and, and look at an aggregate sales for a particular store and make sense of that data. We're going to have to find patterns in the data in order to uh, figure out how our business is doing because we're going to have so much data that it's just going to be overwhelming. So some of the questions that we might want to answer, and these are just a, a couple of little examples here, is who's likely to commit fraud? So if you're, uh, maybe you work in the, the credit industry or the banking industry and you want to know who's going to commit fraud, you can use data mine based on the people that you know have committed fraud to try to predict other people who might commit fraud. Or maybe you're, you're not 100% sure of what makes up a person that commits fraud. So you can use data mining to try to figure out some of those relationships. Okay. If you work in the retail industry and you've ever, uh, ever done any kind of management there, then 
for a, for a large organization anyway, you'll know a lot of times you'll get labor projections. So maybe if you're a, a large retailer, your, your store is only allowed to use uh, maybe 17 hours of, of labor on a particular day. So the way that they end up figuring all that out is a combination of uh, past history and future projections. And that's really what data mining is going to do. So based on the, the number of customers I'm going to see this weekend, how much labor should I, should I be planning for? That kind of stuff. It also summarizes information's, information. So <clears throat> if we want to look for people who commit fraud, we already know, like I said, maybe we know some people who have committed fraud before. So what does that person look like? You know, are they somebody who has a, a lot of debt? Are they somebody who just has a lot of money and doesn't, you know, wants to, wants to get more money? You know, there's a, there's a lot of things that could go into um, determining what that person looks like. And we can summarize large sets of data using data mining. The other thing that we might be able to see based on our retail example there is, you know, I'm, I'm going to do some, some projections based on my, my previous sales history. And maybe this weekend, I, the projections say I'm going to see 10% fewer customers this weekend than I saw last weekend. So I know I can cut back on labor and save a little bit of money. Okay. There's a lot of different types of data mining algorithms. We're going to focus on the ones that Analysis Services uses the most. So the ones that are available inside SSAS are, uh, for the most part, also available inside the data mining add-in for Excel here. Um, so uh, they're, they're a little bit disguised in the way that they present that to the end users in uh, one of the two scenarios that we're going to look at. But for the most part, everything that you can do inside of AS, uh, you also have those same options here inside of Excel. So the first one is going to be your classification algorithms. So this one's going to predict one or more discrete variables. So in the case of the data that we're going to look at, I'm going to show you guys how to get some of the sample adventure works data. And uh, you know, if, if we're, we're Rachel over here, she, she was really upset with the data set that I had. So rather than saying, does somebody want to buy a bike, she wants to know, is somebody ready to adopt a puppy? So maybe our variable that we want to predict is, will they, will they adopt a puppy? Okay. We also have something called a regression algorithm, and that's a continuous, continuous algorithm. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at previous trends over a period of time, and then we're going to go and we're going to predict profit or loss in the future based on something that happened in the past. 